video, I'm gonna share with y'all my journey to becoming a full-time graphic designer. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan. If you have not been here before, thank you so much for coming. Currently sitting in a hotel room in Portugal. Um, we're in Madeira, Portugal, which I have a vlog coming very soon. But I had another video to post today, but I really wanted to make a new one and post this because it's been really heavy on my mind this entire trip. And I love to share everything with you guys about what I'm thinking, what I've been doing, and everything like that. So if you hear the background noise, we um, are in the hotel and I have the porch door open. I might close it in a minute. Anyway, I needed to close that because there's a group of guys outside just talking really loudly. Um, so if you hear that, I do apologize. But I really wanted to make a video today to talk about my journey and all the things I have gone through, the things I'm doing currently to help me grow my graphic design business because I get questions on this all the time. All the things that led me to this point because I feel like although I've shared my journey, I haven't really shared some of the finer details that I have been thinking more about this trip. So I wanted to share with you all. So sit back, grab a glass of wine, grab whatever it is you want to snack on, because I'm going to share with you guys my story, my experiences, and also just some things that have helped me kind of get to where I am right now. So the good, the bad, all the things that I have done to help me get to where I am. So first things first, I know I've shared this before, but I did not know I wanted to be a graphic designer. I was going to college, I wanted to be a nutritionist, I was super interested in health and fitness and nutrition, so I went into multiple avenues to kind of explore that. I kind of in the back of my head always knew I'd end up doing something creative because even when I was really little, I would like beg my mom to let me like paint my nails or do some nail art or even like use the little puffy paint things and like decorate shirts and bags and like I was always interested in art. I even started and this also kind of came to me the other day when I was thinking about like why am I doing this now but when I was younger I remember I was probably only like 12 years old I was making jewelry and I would make like these really awesome little, um, you know those like stitched bracelets? I would make those and actually sell them on the beach that my family and I would go to on our little like summer vacations. I would go and sell those on the beach. So I always kind of had that entrepreneurial spirit of wanting to like make money um, off of things I created. It kind of hit me recently when I was thinking about like how did I get to this point I've always had that like entrepreneurial spirit. I've always had that creative background. And to be honest, I do think that being an artist and being creative does take a little bit of natural intuition. I feel like there is, it's really hard to kind of train yourself to have that eye. It's definitely possible, but I do feel like it's kind of this natural thing that you and many creatives have is having that eye to like see things that look really nice, look really pretty because a lot of people don't know even just the little simple understanding of like white space on design and I've noticed that that's typically how I can tell a designer from a non-designer is if they do not know how to use like white space. Anyway, I could go on and on about that. Sitting to that intuition that you have about what looks good to you is really gonna help you grow as a designer because a lot of people have different views of the world, different perspectives, and if you can really hone in on yours and um, have that set apart from other designers, that's going to be very powerful. But I've always kind of had that creative spirit to me, that entrepreneur driven attitude. So when I was in college, I did design, I did some visual communications studies and that's when I was introduced to graphic design. I remember taking a course where they would kind of mention it here and there and we'd have to like redesign an existing brand. And that's when I really got introduced to like how brands can take something and make it look like legit. Um, so that's when I really was like, this is really cool. I think I could be doing that, but I still did not think that it would be a career. Um, and that was when I decided to work at a marketing agency as a project manager. And even then, I did not think that I would be getting into graphic design. I thought I would just help them get organized, help them kind of 
manage their clients. But that specific choice I made to go work at that marketing agency was probably the best choice I could have made. This was back in 2016 when I graduated college. 2016, I decided to work for them. And that was when I got my foot in the door with design. That is when I was able to try designing myself, open up Adobe Illustrator, do logos, do all that. And it was amazing. And I instantly knew that this was going to be for me. And this was like the right thing for me. So that was when I first got introduced. Okay, I'm so sorry if you can hear him. He's very loud, but that was when I like initially got my foot in the door with graphic design and then after the marketing agency went under they actually i saw them fail right in front of my eyes to be honest i just saw the actual partnership between them all not work i saw them not treat the clients very well i saw a lot of things working for them a lot of good things and a lot of bad things um, but it really taught me that that is not the way to kind of handle client situations not the way to really run a business and also working with friends can sometimes have some problems. So I got to see a lot of things happen there. But after I left the marketing agency, that was when I decided to actually get into Upwork. And this was back in 2017 now, I think we're talking. So Upwork at the time was not as saturated. It was a lot, not easier to get clients, but it was a lot more possible. I know now it's like packed with um, designers and freelancers, but at the time it was, much easier to apply and actually get the job. So I applied to like 10 to 12 jobs. I think they had a limit. I think they still have a limit to how many jobs you can apply to. I would hit that limit every day. I would apply to jobs a ton because I knew that that was what I was good at and that was what I could do. So I was applying, applying, applying. I got a lot of clients through Upwork and that was supporting me for a while, but it wasn't enough. I still wasn't I was working for the money. I wasn't working because I loved doing it. So that was when I decided to go apply to another job. And also at the time I did not know, and I kind of wish looking back, I did not know that I could, not even I did not know, I didn't believe in myself enough to take my business completely full time at that time, which totally fine. I really don't regret that. But that was when I worked at another corporate company doing graphic design. And that also was a great decision I made because I was able to see that working at, as graphic designer in a corporate company, you're gonna have to follow a lot of guidelines, use the same fonts, the same colors every single day, which was not my vibe. I really do not like using the same thing all the time. I wanted to like work with different clients. So I was still maintaining my Upwork clients on the side. That's a key point there because I feel like a lot of us think we can just jump into a graphic design career or take the business full time and make money, but that really wasn't the case. I had to work multiple jobs at a time to get to where I am. And it took a lot of sacrifice, a lot of hours, a lot of leaving work on, on my lunch break, answering up work clients, you know, doing all the things. So I really want to make that clear. And this is why I want to make the video because I don't want it to seem like overnight it just happened. Um, this was 2017, like end of 2017, I was working there. So I ended up getting a call. This was, I feel like a very lucky circumstance and a very, I'm very grateful for this opportunity, but my good dad, my dad's good friend, he had a job opportunity to help him manage some websites and I'd be working completely remote from home, helping him. And he is also a fellow entrepreneur. So I said yes to the opportunity and I was able to work from home for about three and a half years. During those three and a half years was crucial for me to help me start to grow my business on the side. I didn't have a full-time business yet, but I still had my Upwork clients, my other clients and, you know, like building the content, kind of understanding who I am as a designer on the side. So I had my full-time job and I was doing that on the side for almost three and a half years, which is crazy to think about. Probably more than that, honestly, thinking back because I was doing the Upwork clients while I was at the corporate company. So I was building my business on the side for like, let's say four years. Um, and I really wanted to share that because I feel like I didn't explain that enough in my last story about how I became a graphic designer. It really took a lot of sacrifice of time of not going out and socializing all the time. It took weekend work. I remember Saturdays and Sundays working at coffee shops. It took a lot of that um, consistently to help me grow my business. And 
what really took it off, what really just helped me finally take my business full time and make that decision for myself was knowing that I was making enough income with my clients on the side to support myself financially and also to live a quality life. I didn't want to live paycheck or not even paycheck to paycheck. I didn't want to live project for project. and I didn't want to feel like stressed trying to get clients all the time. I wanted to be able to live the way I like to live um, while making money and doing what I love. So I waited till that perfect opportunity, that perfect moment to take my business full time. I'm currently in my second year of being a full time business owner and I am so glad I waited. I literally cannot thank myself enough for waiting. And I really didn't know that I was waiting just for good reasons. I genuinely was afraid of taking the risk. I was afraid of not having that consistent income. I was afraid of all of that. So it was a lot of fear. It was a lot of fear, um, but I'm very glad that I was not taking the risk super quickly because I probably would have been stressed out about trying to make money all the time, every single month. So I waited, I was patient about it, and I grinded my ass off. If I really can be truthful with you guys, I definitely had some weeks and some months where I felt like I was just unhappy. I just was working so much and I didn't really love what I was working on. Um, the full-time job I had didn't take that many hours of my day, but I definitely had really difficult client experiences on the side while having the business, while doing the YouTube, while doing all the things. And it was a lot at the time. And I didn't really know what I was doing it for yet. I had a vision, but I didn't know what it would turn into. And it's still growing to this point, but I just feel like it took a lot of sacrifice of time and a lot of um, a lot of work. So I really wanted to share that because I feel like a lot of us jump into the business. We jump in so quick, which I think can work if you are willing to use your money or at least manage your money wisely and know how to like save it and do all of that. But I was really afraid of that. So I waited and I waited till it was the right time until I knew that I would be financially okay. Um, so yeah, I just really wanted to share that because I think it's an important part of my story. And I really think that's important to keep in mind if you're considering taking your business full time. Maybe you just like hate your job so much and you know you're going to be successful in design, but you're afraid that you don't have enough money to do that yet. It's okay to just wait and set up a plan for yourself. And I'm very glad that I did that. It really, really saved me a lot of stress, a lot of headache. And I was able to celebrate that leap into full time business a lot more because I knew that like I was going to be... I was gonna be okay. I was gonna have it all figured out and I knew what I needed to do to make it work. So I had a lot of experience, um, four years of experience doing it on the side to know the clients I wanna work with, how to manage clients, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, I wanted to share that all. That's a little bit of my story. That's a very short form of it. I've definitely gone through lots of client experiences, working for tons of places. I've had so many jobs, you guys, like I've worked at, millions of food restaurants i've worked at so many different career jobs whatever like i dabbled in so much until i knew that this is what i wanted to do and i feel like maybe that's a personality trait maybe that's a creative person trait but i just was never satisfied until i knew i'd be doing something i love um so i'm so so grateful to be where i am right now but i do want to share that i want to give you guys some like confidence to if you feel like maybe you are ready to take that leap into full time then it's probably the right time if you feel like everything else is going well then don't be afraid to take that risk when it's the right time it's definitely so worth it because I personally feel that when you're doing something you love you're going to be consistent and you're going to do everything you need to do to make it work um so yeah I definitely am so happy I finally took the leap and it's my second year. I feel like I've been talking about this for so long, but it was such a really scary decision in my life. It was a, a scary thing to realize that you wouldn't be getting that consistent paycheck every single two weeks. Um, but knowing that like I trusted myself to make it work was all I needed to make that happen. So um, I wanted to share that because I feel like in my last video, I talked about all the jobs in this linear way of like this led me to this point which i feel like in a very grateful thankful way it kind of did 
but it was me saying yes to so many opportunities me not being afraid to take say yes to the job and you know work hard maybe on something i don't love but working hard and having my business on the side just kind of managing the two saving enough money until i was ready until i was financially ready until i was mentally ready until everything felt kind of in the right place and when i put myself back in my situation of making that decision i feel like i felt at the time it's never gonna be a good time it's never gonna be the right time but i kind of disagree with that mindset i had then i feel like you'll know when you when it is the right time when like i said when you have enough money when you know you're making enough when you know you're going to be getting clients consistently then i feel like it is the right time so anyway i wanted to share that um, little piece of information. I do get questions a lot on how I'm getting my clients right now, which I feel like can be a whole other video, but it's not just me doing one simple thing. It's me having that background and that years and years of consistency of posting of putting myself out there and, you know, building my network of people. It's not just me posting one thing that's going to bring clients in. And I know that sounds probably like annoying, not what you want to hear, but it really isn't just one thing at one time. It's consistency and putting yourself out there and all of those things. So I'll make a whole other video on how I'm landing my clients right now because it is kind of interesting with our ever-changing like social media industry and all of that. So I'll definitely share more about that, but I really just want to be real with you guys. It's taken a lot of, a lot of years, a lot of growth, a lot of experiences, a lot of learning things about what I want to do and yeah I'm still learning I'm still learning every day that's why I like to have this channel with you guys but anyway I hope you find that interesting I hope that's kind of helpful if you feel like you're in that situation or maybe you were recently in that situation I just really hope that gives you some maybe excitement motivation some trust in yourself because it's really exciting when you do get to take that leap into running your business but Anyway, it's getting so dark, so I'm probably going to cut this short now. I have another video that will be posted next week, more about the actual financials of running a business, and then I will definitely will make one about landing clients. So definitely stick around for more videos if you enjoyed this kind of real talk situation. I'm going to get more into design, I promise you guys. I feel so bad. I haven't been doing a lot of like actual design videos, um, but I have a lot of fun things coming. So definitely stick around. And if you enjoyed this, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. And I will see you guys in my next video.